What's up friends, today we are here again with Inazuma. And it's been a little bit since I've done a video on this. Um, I meant to do a summary video of my experience at Apple Valley Speedway. Didn't get around to it yet, but today we're actually going to be upgrading slash fixing this thing because uh, we've got a dead drivetrain back here and I haven't been able to practice since November. So today we're going to be upgrading the rear truck. Oh, I didn't grab it. We're going to be upgrading the rear hanger to an HD hanger. We're going to be adding SKP Reacher motors here. And we're also going to be changing the gear ratio up to 5.5. And uh, this should make for a pretty spicy build that will be able to pull a lot more amps on these motors than I was on the Flip Sky one. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so there is going to be quite a process to this and it has to be gradual and eh, unfortunately it requires a complete disassembly of the entire drive system. So uh, including taking the enclosure off to unplug the wires and do motor detection on the new motor. So it's gonna take some time, but uh, basically first step we're going to do is take off the wheels, take off the gear drives, um, blowtorch the motor pinions off of the motors and then take the gears out of the gear drives, um, take the hanger and base plate off of the deck. Um, and then at that point, we can start assembling the new stuff and then we'll have to put it all back together. And I'm also going to swap out the tires because these are starting to show threads and uh, they're pretty slippery now. So we've got a new set of the Lin Power tires to put on here for now. Um, I really want to go to BRPs, but I can't afford them right now. so. I will have to do that at some point in the future. Uh, but basically, I'm probably gonna be on Lynn Powers again for ECACon, which is uh, not ideal, but I'll have to make do and see how well I can do with that anyway. So let's go ahead and get started and take this drivetrain apart. All right, so first thing we need to do is take off the wheels. So those are gonna come off first. And as you might be able to see here, the, uh, the right hand motor is taken apart. Uh, this motor was absolutely messed up and uh, the can I put in a box somewhere, but basically one of the magnets had come loose and uh, it was just kind of grinding on the rest of the motor. So I had to take it off and uh, see what the problem was. And then I found out that the problem was too big to fix. So here we are upgrading to new motors and uh, it should be a much more powerful experience overall. I think with this upgrade and I know that the reachers have a really good reputation so I'm excited for it. Part of the challenge for putting this all back together is going to be getting all the offsets right because uh, the HD hangers are actually wider so if I want it to match the front wheels I'll have to set the gear drive in a very specific spot and hopefully everything works out with the length of the motors and all that because uh, I'm not super sure yet. So. Let's go ahead and disassemble us. As you can see, this does not have a shaft in it. So uh, obviously we didn't have to blow torch that gear off because I already did it when I took this apart to inspect the motor in the first place. So makes that a little bit easier. Now, this is actually quite tight um, because I used red Loctite to put this on. Wasn't tight enough for the uh, motors when I was racing, but it's definitely not easy to get off by hand. It's definitely the easiest way to get it off because there's no way I'd be unscrewing that adapter without the plate on it. Okay. 
There we go. Beautiful. Got a bit of red Loctite on there as expected. All right, now time for the other side. All right, so I have got the outside of this gear drive off and it seems like this uh, gear has taken quite a bit of damage. So it's a good thing that I'm switching gear ratios because these teeth are completely uh, ruined. Not really sure if this is my fault or if there is manufacturing error or what, but in any case, uh, it's shredded. So I <laughs> was not expecting to see that when I opened this side because I thought it was only the other side that was ruined, but it is what it is, but I'm taking it apart anyway, so let's keep going. Oh, also, it's time to blowtorch off the gear. So I am going to pull out my little mini blowtorch and start heating this up, and then we'll be able to slide it right off. Some movement. Very good. Maybe not. Okay, we can pry it off while holding it, it looks like. There we go. Perfect. The reason why these have to get blowtorched off is because they had green Loctite on them, and uh, here's a look at what the pinion looks like. Not looking super good. You can see the teeth are a bit <laughs> messed up, but oh well. Raced hard on it. All right, so we went ahead and got the drives off. I got these little adapters off and it wasn't horrible, but it took forever because uh, the red Loctite was putting up a real fight and I had to get out the blowtorch and torch this a whole bunch to be able to get the uh, threads to come off of the hanger. So that was uh, that was something that took quite a while. Um, anyway, going to go ahead and take this hanger and base plate off the deck completely uh, so we can go ahead and swap out this hanger. And I'm probably gonna need to look at a video on how to do this because uh, it requires uh, torquing down this jam nut pretty good. And also this heim bolt needs to be straight in axis or in uh, line with the rest of the deck, which uh, might be challenging for the tools that I have on hand. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off and uh, we'll see what comes next. And bam, there we go. Truck is now off. And I was thinking about drilling a hole for the, um, the heim bolt to drop through. And looks like I don't even have to worry about positioning because <laughs> the truck already left an imprint on the wood. So that's pretty convenient for me. And uh, now I guess I will try to take the hanger off of the base plate. That I think is gonna be quite challenging. This hind bolt is not very easy to get to, and I only have this teeny tiny crescent wrench, so I'm gonna have to see if I can find something to use as a cheater bar. And, oh goodness, this one isn't big enough. Well, that may be an issue. I'll be back. Well, my other wrench turned out to be big enough to fit on here, but the problem now is that this thing is really tight, 
and I need to find something to put on this wrench so I can get enough leverage to actually loosen this because right now there's no chance and if I do that I'm going to slice myself open on this incredibly sharp base plate so uh, to get to there I think what I'm going to do is unscrew the two links um, and let them hang off because they need to get unscrewed anyway and they're just in the way of the swing of the crescent wrench so I'm going to go ahead and take those off and uh, then try to find something to put this wrench on All right, so I went ahead and took off the links here and uh, I ended up putting this back on the deck uh, with the screws the other way because I think that's gonna be the easiest way to be able to get leverage on this. And now I just need to see if I'm able to pop this off carefully. I think I might try the dead blow hammer and see if I can tap it out a little. But I doubt that this is gonna work very well, especially with a crescent wrench. So I'm going to need to find a bar or a piece of strong piece of wood and attach it to it so I can properly knock this off. Because right now I don't think I'm getting anywhere. Okay, I found a bar to use. I'm not sure how it fits. That's good. Let's see if I can do this. I have to do some weird maneuvering here. Oh, geez. The board is sliding all over. Try to do this without breaking something. Ugh. Oh, this is not very easy. Ah, oh, jeez. Need to like strap down the board or something. Cause this is not what I would call ideal. This is definitely going to be able to apply a lot more force. The only problem is I certainly do not want the crescent wrench to slip. There's always some slop in these things too. Yeah, this is not working very well. Oh, crap. Feels like I'm going to break the crescent wrench to be honest. I need to get this secured better. All right, so we have uh, failed to take this nut off a couple times now, so I went ahead and got these uh, comically large wrenches, um, one being a 15 16th uh, for the nut, and then a one inch for the base plate. If you didn't know that, the base plate fits a one inch wrench perfectly. And now I'm going to attempt to crack this off on the board. Um, if that doesn't work out, I'm just gonna put it in a vise, but I'm gonna at least attempt it on here so I don't have to uh, figure out how to hold the vise in place because <laughs> right now it's a, it's a little bit easier to hold the board in place so let's see if we can get this to work out I'm not exactly sure what the best method for this is here but it's not a ton of bite so let's see what we can do yeah this is gonna be pretty tough I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record this it's gonna be Hard to not get in the way, but I'll let you know. All right, I was able to pop it loose. I just put this on here and then grabbed the board and cranked it. Um, I guess having a, a maybe like 16 inch lever arm helps a lot. <laughs> so got that off. And now I think this just spins out. Yep. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out that I was just kind of holding it in place with. You would think that switching this out would be an easy process and then you start doing it and it's just not as easy as you expected. 
Uh, the other thing that I have to keep in mind is that the hanger, when I put the new one in, it needs to be perfectly 90 degrees to the deck, which is another challenge. Uh, so I'm probably gonna use the string method that someone else showed in a forum thread. Basically you take a string, you run it from the center of this hind bolt to the center of the front one, and then it gives you a angle here and it makes it a lot easier to measure 90 degrees than just sticking a carpenter square against the deck. So hopefully I'll be able to do it with that method and make sure that it's nice and straight. Another thing that I'm gonna do while this is off is I'm going to drill the hole out for the hind bolt with this Forstner bit. This is a three quarters, which is a tad bigger than the um, bolt, but makes it easier to not have to center it perfectly. So go ahead and drill that. And uh, I'm not gonna drill it all the way through, I don't think, but I'm gonna drill it through enough to at least sink the hind bolt part way into the deck. Um, it, I might decide to drill it all the way through, but we'll see. So the reason I got the forcer is so I don't have to, but I'm not sure how deep in I want to go, especially for short track. Getting closer to the ground helps a bit from what I've heard, but uh, it also, with the geometry of this deck, it makes it a little bit harder to turn. You have to put more force into it just because of how the lever arm works. Um, so we'll see. I don't really think that I want to go all the way down, but maybe going in an inch or half an inch or something will give me a little bit better ride feel, get closer to the ground. All right, so I went ahead and messed around with this a bit to try and figure out what height I wanted. And I ended up drilling. Uh, anyway, I was saying, I messed around with this to get the uh, perceived ride height that I wanted by uh, putting the wheel on here and screwing it down. I think this is gonna be plenty of ride height. And now my axle here is much closer to the deck ride height, which is what I was going for. So going to go ahead and figure out how to put this back on. And uh, for the hole, I ended up drilling like 95% of the way through. There's actually a tiny bump on top where the center of the drill bit was starting to come, come uh, through, but not quite all the way. So I think that will be fine. And now I think what I need to do is reattach these so that they hold this in place and then square this up and tighten it down. I'm not sure what the exact order is there. So to connect this back up, I have to loosen these. Wrong size. Gotta pop these out, which completely loosens the shaft collar here. And we have to stick the link through. And then it'll go in here. But the only thing is the link is way too long. So I guess that's interesting because I thought that these trucks were longer, but I guess not. Maybe I had, oh, the, the link was on the top of the truck before, that's why. Um, well, I also know that I want to move these up to the second turn hole, so I guess I'll do that at the same time. So I went ahead and got some stuff connected here. I don't think this is quite in the right order, but basically uh, how these work is there's these, I forget what these are called, but these linkages are made up of these screw length adjustment sort of shackle things. And the middle part allows you to increase or decrease the length. These two need to be the same length in order to get the right steering response. Um, and also this screw that attaches the 
link onto the shaft collar needs to be on the flat spot on the hanger. So you kind of have to play a game of like how long it is versus where it sits on the hanger and also make sure that it matches the other side. So I think now is not the time to do this. I think I should tighten the pine bolt down first and get that square and then attach these um, and do the final like straightening with the links instead of trying to do both at the same time. So I guess I'm probably gonna take these off again uh, now that they're approximately the right length, I can sort of temporarily uh, lock them down with the nuts just by a finger. So we'll do that real quick. And that'll kind of hold it in place. Um, and then we can unscrew these and then square up this to the deck and tighten the hind bolt. I think this is gonna be a little bit challenging to get it completely tight in or on the deck, so I might have to take it off for that. I'm gonna try. So go ahead and stick the truck bolts back through to kind of hold it in place on the deck and start tightening it down. All right, after a bunch of struggling, I think I finally got the hind bolt tight enough. So <laughs> now I can put the links on, even them out. And uh, wow, there's nowhere, no, nowhere near even right now. <laughs> no, yeah, there we go. I'll put these links on, straighten them out, and then uh, snug stuff down. And then we can get into uh, putting the jam nuts on here and mounting out the board dynamics drives. All right, so I made a trip to the hardware store and I went and picked up these big old 5 8 by 18 nuts to go on the thread here. Now, this adapter is from Boardnamics. It's technically the same design as before that had been slipping, but the thread on here is now the much larger 5 8 by 18 thread. And so hopefully that will hold better and the jam nut is now a lot bigger and it's not a locking one, which means that I'll be able to apply a lot more torque against the adapter. So I'm hoping this doesn't slip because once I do put all the red Loctite on, I think it's gonna be really hard to get off. Um, so hopefully it'll just stay and we won't have the same problem. But for now, I've just been setting up the nuts on here to see how it looks. And I found out that apparently the whole hanger does turn inside the hind bolt. I didn't actually notice if it did that on my non-HD version, so that was interesting to find out. But it shouldn't really be a problem. That does mean though that you don't necessarily have to have the bolts on the bottom like this, and you can put them on the top like they were on my old board. Um, I'm still deciding if I want to do rear facing motors or not so we're going to, have to play it by ear and see if I want to put them facing the top or the bottom and it seems like I might be able to fit the drive forwards I'm not sure I'm going to try it out and see I think it would be pretty cool to have it facing forwards because I'm always scraping it when I pick it up off the ground but we'll see and uh, I kind of want to get it right the first time, so I'm going to test fit everything, get it set up, and uh, see how it goes. Alright, so we're just getting this uh, fitted up on here, and uh, it seems like this might work out, but I guess I'll need to put on the motors to actually see. But on initial look, with the HG hangers and a little bit more space seems like it might work. I'm concerned about which direction the cable will come out of the motor. So let's stick in a screw to put it in place. As you can probably tell, this is voiceover, but I'm just gonna summarize what I was working on here. So 
basically I fit up the motor to try and see if it would fit had to go ahead and tighten up the radius rods and uh, set them in place so the hanger would stop rotating in the high bolt um, and it's not exactly 100% straightforward so it takes a little bit of time messing around with it tighten up the bushings tighten up the radius rods and then finally I'm able to get it in the right spot where I can test it and do a maximum turning uh, test on the actual truck to make sure that the motor isn't going to hit anything important. So we went ahead and skipped pretty far forwards here and I made a bunch of progress. Um, kind of got the whole gear drive and wheel laid out on here to see if everything is going to fit. and. It's looking really good right now. It seems like I might be able to do this forward mounted. And I've seen other people have problems with this before, but on my particular setup with the HD drives on the RE44 and the e-boosted enclosure, it seems like there's enough room. And this is really great because on the previous setup, my motors were always like an inch off the ground, hitting rocks all the time, getting damaged, and uh, heating up extra from being next to the hot asphalt with them forward mounted the enclosure kind of protects them i don't have any issues with the linkages getting in the way which was another problem on the previous setup couldn't put the linkages in all the positions i wanted so this is kind of what i want to do motors in the front linkages in the back and it seems like the cables are even going to work out all right i'm a little bit concerned about them getting this close to the motor but i think with the right P clamps um, and the right routing will be able to make it work out. So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this did turn into a way longer project than I originally intended and I spent like two full uh, afternoons on this thing. So hopefully the end result is going to be as great as I think. I am pretty happy with how the spacing all worked out here and uh, there's enough room to hit the jam bolt with the full size wrench so that's pretty exciting. Went ahead and started assembling the other side to make sure that both sides are going to clear properly you know even though they should be the same gotta make sure so I put the other motor on organized the cables and uh, made sure to loosen the truck up enough so that I could try and get the full turn out of it and make sure that the motor corners weren't going to touch the enclosure. They do get fairly close when you go ahead and press it all the way down, but it's actually the gear drive casing that hits the deck before the motor hits the enclosure, which is an ideal circumstance for me because that means that I don't really have much to worry about. All right, so I got stuff kind of situated over here. Um, now I'm going to flip this over and take the old motors out the cables are really getting cranked on right now, so I don't want to damage them because uh, I want to use these for something else or sell them. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but this is kind of in a good place right now, so I'm going to flip this over and hopefully not break anything while I do that. <laughs> and then we can take off the old motors after I figure out a way to prop up the deck properly because it might be a little bit challenging. Actually, flipping this is going to be challenging that I think about it. Yeah, I can hold both at the same time. Kind of do like this weird flippy thing. <laughs> Try not to break anything. And the motors are going to hang on the cords. Oops, feels bad, feels bad. Okay, we got it. Nothing died. All right, now I need to figure out a way to <laughs> hold the deck up above. Wait, I just pull this off. Duh. <laughs> there you go. That looks funny. Oh, Gasket has done a wonderful job of keeping all the dirt out. There's not a single speck of dirt in here. Very good. All right, so while we've got the enclosure off, it looks kind of funny, but up front, I do need to change the hind bolt to the same height as the back. So I'm going to go ahead, take that off, draw out the hole, and uh, make sure that it matches the back. And I do have to say, these motors do look real nice on here. I think that this new forwards mounted setup is gonna be pretty sweet. I think I might be able to make a nice little 3D printed 
table holder to hold these all flat so they go into the enclosure at a nice uh, organized point. So we'll see what I can do. All right, so I've gone ahead and done some work off camera. Took off the front truck, dropped the hind bolt to the same exact height as the rear one. And I went ahead and swapped out the rear tires for new ones. I do need to switch out the front tires for new ones as well. And then I also went ahead and popped out the gears from the uh, old gear drives. So we can go ahead and stick in this new ratio. And so now what I'm going to do is take apart the rear drive train again um, and cut the motor shafts to the right length because those also need to be shortened. And then we should be ready to put some red Loctite on the adapters and get these stuck in place. I did actually do a uh, standing test, which is why the wheels are on right now, to make sure that this wasn't gonna hit anything. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the wires here. I definitely need to make an adapter or a, a little clamp down thing for these uh, so the motors can't hit them. Um, but other than that, going pretty smoothly. So I'll catch up with you guys when I'm cutting off the motor shafts. Okay, so I went ahead and cut these down to length. Now you can see that they're quite a bit shorter and uh, that's to fit inside of the gear drive case. So next I cleaned out the gear drives. Uh, there was a bunch of gunk in here and uh, these are the new gears. So didn't want to transfer over all the old gunk. So I cleaned those out. Uh, both of these are cut now and ready to get put in place more permanently. Now. I made a little sharpie mark on here that aligns with the sharpie mark on the axle. I'm hoping that will allow me to <laughs> make sure I keep this in the right uh, orientation because uh, it gets a little difficult now because we need to take this off all the way, put red Loctite on it, screw it back on all the way, and then we need to tighten the jam nut and also make sure that it stays in the right spot. So gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Um, I'm going to also use the three link uh, length to kind of make sure that it's oriented perfectly, but it's gonna take a while to get both of these on. So right now I'm gonna take this off, take the motor off, um, and I'll catch back up when uh, we're gonna put the Loctite on. We're ready to put red Loctite on here, and I'm gonna put it inside the threads here and on the actual axle. And for this, I've got 271 red. This should be pretty good for this purpose. I also have retaining compound, but um, that's not going to be as good for this particular setup. So this is it. This is the one and done kind of because uh, I have a feeling with these gigantic threads that once I put this on here, it's going to be pretty dang hard to get off, which obviously I want because I don't want the motors to slip, but also a little bit nerve-wracking so hopefully I can get this right on the first go and we won't have any issues with alignment or spacing or whatever I'm gonna try to not get it on the axle oh, that's the one from the other side one of these is a little tighter than the other for some reason but it's fine Oh wait, actually that means that the mark isn't going to line up. Got to use the other one. Let's see if that thread in well. Oh, it spreads around quite a bit. Probably need a little more. I don't know if maybe it would be a good idea to thread it on here part way and then take it off or what? Well, that does remind me I did want to put some blue Loctite on the jam nut. I want red on there because I want it to be possible for me to undo it if necessary without a torch, but I didn't put it on there yet. So that's spread around pretty good actually. We'll have to see how well it holds up, but I'm just going to put some blue on the actual 
axle over here and kind of thread the nut back onto it uh, so I don't have to take it all the way off. I think that'll work fine. Get a healthy dose. I don't really know if uh, blue and red mixing together is going to be a problem, but I think it'll be fine. Besides, these threads are so huge. It feels like they have a lot of play in them compared to a uh, more fine thread, smaller pitch stuff. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but the coating in here really spreads out. So I'm going to put even a little bit more on because I don't really want to have to take this off again. Especially because I'm going to be trying to ride it in a couple days. Let's go. Ooh, almost made rookie mistake. Cannot forget to put this on. Otherwise, I'll be very sad. Well, it didn't line up anyway, so. Oh, it's because I didn't turn the nut on all the way. Oops. All right, so that's about full tight there. Now I have to back drive this to jam it into the adapter, which in turn also loosens the adapter. So that is kind of an interesting thing on this side. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but on the other side, it will be tightening the adapter into the axle more versus loosening it on this side. So I'm gonna to try to torque this down and see if it works out. All right, so I cranked that down pretty good on there and it actually ended up <laughs> realigning the Sharpie mark. So worked out just fine. And now I should have the right mark for the motors and I'll be able to put all that on. So now we gotta do the other side. Give this lock tight up and put that one on too. So I went ahead and tightened these down a pretty good amount and we ended up with the motor mounts uh, facing in different spots. So now I'm going to put the motors back on so I can see how much I need to clock this one. Um, I was actually wrong. This side was the side that backs into the screw the more you tighten it this side it actually loosens uh when you're tightening the jam nut just because of the way the thread direction goes so um i'm gonna stick the motor on here on at least one side to check and see um if we're in the right ballpark i think we are i just need to make sure and then once i do that i can mount the motors up more securely and uh, finalize the positioning of these plates. And then we're gonna let the Loctite dry at least for 24 hours. Um, if you actually take a look at the Loctite curing charts, it's quite interesting. It actually gains a lot of strength in the first 30 minutes, but um, not like I'm gonna be done and able to ride this in 30 minutes anyway. So we're gonna give it 24 hours we try and ride on it <clears throat> now I do still have the hanger pretty loose on here I can sort of test clearance that looks like about where I want to be rather than the other one so I'm gonna pull the other one up a little bit um, and just use the wrench also you really have to have a proper size wrench for this. You can't be using a crescent wrench, believe me, I tried. So, if you don't have a big wrench like this, make sure to go borrow one from a friend or uh, figure something out, because if you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. And even with this wrench, it almost feels like not enough uh, to some extent. All right, so that took quite a while to get these aligned properly. I'm not sure that they're still 
They're not 100% aligned. They're pretty dang close. Good enough for uh, what it is. Um, I think that these are tight enough. Uh, this is probably gonna have to be a guess and check thing. I'm just gonna have to go easy at the beginning. Um, and if I absolutely have to, I will disassemble them and add more red lock tight. Yeah, we're gonna have to see how it goes, but I hopefully got them tight down enough. These are definitely not tight enough yet, these uh, shaft collars. Uh, so those will have to get snugged up. These will have to get tightened down real good after I make sure that the links are the same length. Um, right now, I'm just putting in the motor screws and then once we get the motor screws all pre-threaded in, uh, we'll put the gears on and set the backlash and then we'll take out the motor screws and put red Loctite on them because we definitely don't want the uh, gears to be gapping too much and that'll uh, cause more wear and tear than necessary. So onto that. All right, so now that we've got the motor screws pre-rolled in there, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick on the wheel gear, set it into place, give it a spin. I'm going to go ahead and set on the motor gear. I need to find the uh, keyways or the keys for these, but set that in there. Go ahead and mesh that up. And now we've got some meshed straight cut gears and with straight cuts you can kind of just go you can go pretty tight with these so I'm gonna go pretty much where it just sits on itself or sits on each other they're kind of natural mesh point and we'll call that good so we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these down to hold it there these will have to get torqued a lot more later that's pretty tight. Almost zero backlash. Definitely going to want to put some red Loctite, uh, not red Loctite, some red and tacky grease in here to make sure that we're not going to be destroying the teeth, but feels pretty good, I think. So. Go ahead and tighten down the other screws. And then we can back them out one by one to put red Loctite on them. All right, so I just finished setting the backlash for these. It took quite a while. I messed around with it until I got just a tiny bit. Holding closer. Just a tiny bit of backlash. Uh, you really want minimal backlash for these straight cut gears. Um, I tried using a paper sheet like some people do, ended up being too much, they were going to be too floppy, so kind of use the paper sheet, tap the motor in, tighten, take it out, tap it in, it's a, it's a whole process. So now I need to replace these stainless steel screws with the black oxide steel ones because uh, pretty much all these motor screws are just about stripped and uh, that would be a terrible thing to have coming loose and uh, ruining the gear teeth. So I'm going to get some new screws, put Loctite on each of them and tighten it all down and then we'll be able to put the green Loctite on the retaining compound on the gear and uh, it'll sit there and dry. Now that I've got all the motor screws tightened and Loctited on both sides, it is time to do the green Loctite on the motor pinion. So basically what we're going to do is pull off the motor pinion, we're going to put a bunch of green Loctite on the shaft here, we're going to stick the pinion on, we're going to spin the shaft in it a couple times, like that. And then we're going to take it off again, put a little dab more, stick the keyway, sorry, the key into the keyway, and then stick the pinion back on. 
and set it in the place where it perfectly meshes uh, depth-wise with the rest of the wheel gear. All right, finally we are done with these gear drives. Uh, I've got the gear mounted on this side and on this side. It took a little while to get that one on. The keyway was extra tight and uh, definitely had to do some work with the sandpaper there. But it's all mounted up and now they gotta dry. I'm probably gonna get on designing the little bridge thingy that's gonna hold the wires in place and then we can reassemble the whole board and put on some new front tires. Oh, and that's not even to mention the fact that I need to <laughs> redo motor detection for these motors and I'm probably gonna update the firmware on the solos, uh, but I'm not gonna record that because this video is already really, really long, I can tell. <laughs> All right, after getting the VESC set up in here, we're down to basically the last steps. Um, I need to open the gear drives again, put grease on. Uh, I've got some red and tacky to put in there. And then uh, we also need to hook up the motors again and screw the enclosure back on. So we're pretty close to done and I'm just gonna speed through this part and I'll catch up with you guys when it's all assembled. All right, enclosure is all tightened down, all set up, looks great as usual. And now it's time to take off the four bolts, uh, plus the, I guess, wheel plate and put some grease in here. So let's get on it. Alrighty guys, we are finally at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed my first DIY video in the new setup. I'm quite happy with how all this came together and uh, I'm really happy with how this drivetrain came out. I think this is gonna be an awesome upgrade for me. Going to 205 kV here um, and the 5.5 gear ratio. Uh, we'll see how long everything lasts. Hopefully the jam nuts here will hold properly and uh, not send the motors flying into the deck, but we're gonna take it easy tomorrow at practice, try to slowly ease into it, make sure everything is tight, make sure everything is meshing well, and then we'll really put on the power and see what this thing can do. And hopefully I'll be able to make a video kinda on the upgrade and performance for you guys. I didn't get a chance to do my P-Spec score on this board uh, while it was at 18S with the old 170 KV setup, unfortunately. Um, I just, time got away from me and there just wasn't enough. So uh, we definitely will get a P-Spec score on this board to make sure that I get my highest performance board that I've ever made on the charts along with all the other ones that I review and test. And uh, speaking of testing, make sure you get subscribed because I have a Lorentz Major that I'm going to be reviewing and I think you guys will really enjoy that as I have experience with mountain boards and DIY. So. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this extremely long video and learned something about how to install or upgrade your Stooge setup. Um, swapping the hangers out was a huge ordeal. I had to get new equipment for it. And uh, I still don't know if these are 100% straight, but we'll see. And uh, yep, got the new drivetrain. And hopefully you guys found it interesting and fun to watch. So stay safe, keep on riding, and peace out.